doing? I'm New good. York. I know I'm in New York. Yeah. You know, I was a little tired, but it's like this city, it doesn't allow it. Like I was a little tired this morning waking up and they were like, no, 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 girl. Yeah. And like, it, yeah, the energy of this city kind That's of true. wakes you up. Like, How do you, know, you like it? You have to love New York. You've been here so often on and it. off. Yeah. We love it. As, yeah. uh, working on something meaningful in New York City, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Um, it's better than any TV show, any movie. I mean, this is pretty great. Yeah. Your own talk show is pretty great. Yeah. But if, if oh, I didn't. Yeah, and I didn't plan this. If you don't have one. this, yeah. being in, you know being a part of the Broadway community and stuff, it's like it's, yeah. there's nothing like it. That's what I feel so lucky for. So now I live here and I can just go see shows all the time. That's, That's right. amazing. That's right. I'd have to like make a trip. Um, we both have very young kids. Yours are two, yours are two and six, right? That's right. Okay. Are your kids musical? They are. Yeah. Um, they are, I think they're more talented than I ever was at their ages, you know. You sound they're, like a parent. <laughs> they're so, <laughs> they're, they're, no, they're exposed to it so more, so much more than I was. Uh -huh. and, uh, they're so much more comfortable than I was, you know. Yeah, they're, they really, how about yours? Are yours? I the same, you know, now that you say that, I think because they grow up around it, right? So they don't know any different. So they've always seen me, mommy on stage, they've always come on stage when they were babies. So like, I, I think that they don't, it kind of shakes off the nerves a bit yeah. for them. Yeah. Your voice is so magical. I was listening to you earlier. Oh, it's so good. So what, what was like your favorite song as a kid? What's like, what'd you grow up oh, with? Oh, you know, I remember the first grown up song. I think we share this one. The first, the first grown up song that I really liked was Greatest Love of All, <gasps> Whitney. Did Whitney. you did you put it on repeat in your room and just keep yeah, belting it out? I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my mom hated it. Like it's paying off now, but it was a lot of. We lived in a very small duplex. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think my neighbors liked it either. But it's like her songs were so fun, especially that one and the message. It makes you cry. What a yeah. message. I, uh, yeah, I remember there's this, there's this cassette tape that I have from when oh. I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I, I had my own tape recorder in my room, and yeah, I'm just doing that last. Uh, you know, I'm just looping that the final chorus. You know, I said it, love. <laughs> uh, yeah. No prodigy, no prodigy. And you, there, and you're in your head, you are Whitney Houston. Oh, so you're yes. like, I am killing this. Yes. yes. Oh my God. And they had to listen to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love that. Did you ever do the? Um, Cause we're the same, around the same age. Did you ever do the, like, play and record to where you could record on your? Like that was with my first demo. I did like the, you could kind of mess with the tape on it and then you could record yourself on your, so I recorded over people. I was like, I don't like this anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, would do, I would do my own background vocals. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, I was like, not that cool. Oh yeah, cause you could like, if you record it on this side, you know, then you put it on this side, then Oh, the cord, double, yes. Yeah, and then you'd keep flipping. I like, get the double for a minute, yeah. yeah. That cost more. I yeah. was like, yeah, that was, that's really cool. You were rich. Um, so wait, so, <laughs> so I, I didn't know this, but you got your Broadway debut at 17. I, I knew that you started in Rent, I believe, but like I didn't know it was at 17 years old. That's, That's very right. young. Yeah. What was your audition song for Rent? Because it's such a powerful message, such a big thing. I know, I sang the most inappropriate oh. R&B song that, you know, for this rock show. Like Key Sweat? Like what were you saying? We know. Okay. Oh, like, we know. oh, that's a great one. For all we know, yeah. we may never meet again. But you know, for like, So we should make something happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You went for like, because it's kind of a funny musical to do that with, though, exactly. depending on what character you're going yeah, for. No, I was, it was <laughs> Can this so one rock out so much and you're like crooning them? I like it, yeah. But, uh, but you know, that show changed my life. I, I honestly, like, I didn't, I didn't dream of a career in, the, in entertainment on the arts. I wanted to be in Rent. You know what I mean? That's Specific. kind of, Specific. that's were. all I wanted. Yes. You know, I thought I was going to get it when I was 30, retire, from the show when I was like 40 and find something else to do. That's amazing though when something hits you like that and it changes like the trajectory of your life. Yeah, yeah that was late for me. I saw that at a young kid here. It was my first time in New York and I wept and yeah. I was like a teenager so I did not look cool. <laughs> but like I was, I was like, oh my God. It was so, and it was Jean Valjean. That one got me, that song. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, it's, I love when something grabs a hold of you though and just like changes your life in the mm -hmm. best of ways. So wait, I heard that you just got your Philadelphia, is it Music Walk of Fame, right? I did, That's yeah, I got incredible. my star on the Walk of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. How, what was the moment like for you? That's like where you're from. That's cool. You know, I, it, it was really, it really touched me. Um, to Philadelphia has meant the world to me, you know, um, and so you don't, I, I never considered that maybe I might mean something to Philadelphia too, you know, yeah. just out here. That's a nice way to put it. it.
people from uh, people from my my childhood and and from grade school showed up to the to the ceremony, which I also wasn't expecting. It was pretty meaningful. That's pretty cool, man. When you run into people like you knew when you were a kid, and it's just like. What happened? I can't believe this happened. You know, yeah. like everybody has this dream, like to be a part of this industry and especially creative people, you know, yeah. and we're very lucky. Amen. Yeah, I know. Bless. You are now back in New York City. You're back on Broadway. So how do you, how do you like it? What's the show like? How's it going? Oh, I'm loving it's it. Purely Victorious. Um, yes, it's a show called Purely Victorious. It hasn't been on Broadway in 62 years. We brought this, this, uh, Brilliant Ossie Davis play. Great, he's a great American, a great writer. You guys know him. Um, and we, we brought this play back, revived this play after 62 years, and it is just, it's so joyful. It's um, connecting with people, it's found an audience. We've been extended another, another month wow. at the Music Box Theater. So. Yeah. It's so cool. I love the wardrobe for it too, the time that it is. It's oh, very yeah. cool, yeah. It's, uh, you know, Pearly Victorious, I think about Lin Manuel a lot. You know, when I'm doing this show, uh, we got two of them today. But I, I think about <laughs> Lemon Wellot because, you know, it's these two young writers that um, were writing about at different times, albeit different times, writing about America, writing about their country and what it means to be an American. They're very patriotic shows. You should go see like uh, Pearly Victorious Matinee and Hamilton at Night. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's very important though, because I think that a lot of kids got them into history as well. Like, that's so funny that something like, on Broadway did that, but a lot yeah. of, I was like, wait, what? What are y'all talking about? And it just sparked a different kind of, if, if we only taught like that, right? In it's school true. and stuff. It's but you true. are in theater, so there you go. Um, so um, I have to say, I thought this was kind of crazy. So you, one of your theater classes was actually taught by, did Billy Porter, did he step in for a bit he of it? He did, yes. Yeah. Billy, uh, I went to, a, um, the college I went to was uh, Carnegie Mellon University, and Billy's also a Carnegie grad. I love him. And so he's the best. Yeah. And yeah, Billy came junior year and taught uh, for half a semester, and he was like the most impact. I, I don't want to make any of my teachers in demean my teachers, anyone but, else. Yeah. We're not doing that but yet. But Billy was he was an exceptional teacher because he was a hero too. You yeah, know, he was a hero before then, and he just came and and changed our lives really. I, yeah. Oh, that's magical having a teacher like that as well. I know. Oh, I love that you got all that experience as a kid. That's why you're an amazing human. Um, so also why you're an amazing human is I recently heard that you love um, journaling. I'm a huge yeah. journal kid. Now I get a little nervous about someone finding it, but. I know. Yeah, because that's happened to me before. Someone found it and like read it and then accused me of like, what was in it? And I was like, you got my, that's my mess. I was yeah. like, wait, what? I was like, you jumped in that tornado. That's on you. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, yeah. But like, I love it though. It makes me feel good to get it out. Yeah, it kind of it's an yeah another thing that's you know changing a lot change will change your life. I started waking up an hour and a half to two hours before oh, my wife and my kids and see so you have time. Yes, my me time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll journal. I do my yoga. I drink my coffee and stuff. And it's okay. it's a chance for me to find out where I am and uh, before the day starts rushing in. And I've you know I've had realizations for for the record, you know I I went through one of those really tough seasons that's kind of waiting for everybody you know if you haven't been through it yet just wait it's coming you know yeah. but you know one of those seasons and I journaled through the whole thing and I really was just honestly trying to make it to the other side of that yeah and I, I never was um, thinking that I would use it creatively in any way but yeah there, it dawned on me uh, this one day as I was listening to music and you know music was such a balm and such a um, guiding light. Oh yeah. That time. It was like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to use this. I'm supposed to write about this. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm supposed to make the record that I needed to listen to. You yeah. Know, going oh yeah. yeah. That's what I. That's like the goal, right? That's it something is. you would want to get through as well. Like, um, well, when Leslie um, actually was making his album, Mister, he wrote in his journal, "Finish the task. God needs some folks who are willing and courageous enough to finish what they started, especially after He starts them." Right. I love that. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Do you feel like that still resonates? Yeah. I mean, every now and again, that because the journey's long. You know, it's a long journey, and you can lose your way sometimes in the middle. Um, so I, I wrote th that down because I, I needed to remember it. You know, I needed to... Almost remind uh, yourself, that's yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That it's like, um, it's not always about judging yourself and what you think is good and what you think is worthy. It's, you finish it. Finish the task. You know, the, the inspiration is holy. 
the inspiration to start something, I think. You know, those things are like they, they come from somewhere and to honor that original inspiration and the, the least you can do is finish the task as best you can. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I agree with that. So tell me about your new album. This yeah. is, I was listening to it all last night. It's, it's different like than what I'm used to like hearing, but it's so cool. It's different, it's got, especially how you're performing it today because I also heard him earlier. Um, I love it, how it's starting. I feel like you should release that version of it as well. It's so great. But what what is the, the reason? Like why did you need to do this album? Um, well, uh, I mean, recording is my is my favorite thing to do other than Broadway, mm -hmm. you know, and doing talk shows. Uh, <laughs> Good but, answer. Uh, <laughs> I, I love making these albums. And, you know, the truth is I, I we were almost finished an, a whole other record, you know, and then kind of life came and we I went through this um, traumatic, you know, experience in, in my life, a yeah. season, one of those times. And... Um, when, when I got back to recording, you know, I'm sure you've been through this too, you go back to sing those old songs and you're like, I can't even sing those anymore. Oh, I gotta write yeah. all new stuff. So this was, this was just that it was, um, it's really, you know, I, I had the realization really about journaling, that whole thing, waking up an hour and a half earlier, all that stuff, like it was three or four months into doing that that I realized what I'm actually doing is loving myself. This is what it looks like, you know. Man, and, and if you don't really know that, like yeah. until your eyes are open to that yeah. concept. And so this is an album uh, sort of uh, about that process, about that process of, of firstly learning how to love your damn self. You know, it's the only way yeah. that I have a prayer. Because we're our worst critics, yeah. Yo, my God, it's Absolutely. the only way that I have a chance of having grace with, with um, my dear ones, my beloved ones, is if I have some for myself. Absolutely, and I don't know if you can show it unless you can like feel it for yourself that's as true. well. Like you can't project it. So your song, that's a good segue. So it's called Loved, that's the one right. you're doing today. Is that kind of the inspiration behind that? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I was, um, there's this, I'm sure you've had this too, like, you know, this realization about the flexibility of time when you have kids. You know, there's times when I'm looking at my son and I and I almost feel like I'm looking at myself and, yeah. and I can almost feel, you know, it'll be a blink before oh, I see her. I'm an old man. Especially my least. daughter, and I'm like, oh my God, I can see you at 20. This is right, scary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so anyway, it's it's about that. And I was feeling, you know, kind of connected to my to my grandparents, even though they're no longer here. And it's about that. There's a refrain in the song. Um, Show them you've been loved. Show them how I loved you. You know, if you've, if you've been loved by anybody yeah. in your life, it's like, you know, when you're looking for the courage to take that next step, when you're looking up sometimes the courage to, you know, go out and, and face the world one more time, it's like what you, you know, if, if you don't have it within yourself, um, I just, I heard my grandparents saying that. Show, show the world that we loved you. Yeah, and show them what love looks like and feels like, yeah. Um, stay with us, everybody, because Leslie will be singing later in the show. You do not want to miss it. It's beautiful. His new album is called When a Crooner Dies. It's out now.